It's a Russell Recon week, and I have a great panel for you today to learn more about what Russell Recon is, how it impacts the Russell products, impacts the exchanges, and how it impacts you, the traders. Today's podcast is sponsored by CME Group and FTSE Russell. Whatever the obstacles, CME Group provides the tools that global market participants need to manage risk and capture opportunities. With 24 hour access to futures, options, cash, and OTC products across all major asset classes, you can drive your trading strategy forward with confidence and precision. CME Group is where risk meets opportunity. And traders, as you follow along today's panel, be sure to pull up the e mini Russell. 2000 future symbol RTY and micro e mini Russell 2000 future symbol M2K. To learn more about FTSE Russell and their products, please visit footsierussell.com. All right, everybody, we've got the panel here. First, I want to do a quick around the horns this way you know everybody that we're talking to. Catherine, we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Catherine Yoshimoto with FTSE Russell. I'm the director of product management covering the Russell US indexes. Tim. Hey, Anthony, great to be on the show today. Looking forward to today's conversation. Uh, Tim McCourt, Senior Managing Director, Global Head of Equity and FX Products at the CME Group. Pax. My name is Matt Pax. Can I, I've been an tra independent trader local in Chicago for 25 years on the floor of Chicago Mercantile Exchange and now at home on my screens. And I'm CEO and founder of the Pax Group. All right, everybody. Great panel here today to discuss something that happens every year. And Pax, I don't know about you, but I look back at our career on the floor and even when everything moved electronically, I initially didn't know about Russell Recon. It was one of those things where until I was really fully electronic and off the floor and started learning more about the products that I was trading, because on the floor, we just kind of just traded, we went from pit to pit. Now that we are in electronic world, it's great to be able to have guests like Catherine and Tim today to really dig deep inside these indexes to really understand what they are. And Catherine, for a lot of people out there that are probably trading the Russell that may not know that there is a Russell recon every year, what is Russell recon? Russell reconstitution or recon is the annual rebalance of the Russell indexes. So essentially the membership of the indexes, such as the large cap Russell 1000 and small cap Russell 2000 is reset. Um, eligible companies are ranked by size to form the newly reconstituted Russell indexes. And this year it takes effect at the close of U.S. markets on June 24th. Yeah, so it's a big week every year. And Tim, I just want to go to you real quick before we talk more about what Russell Recon is. You work with all the indexes at CME Group. Uh, this is a special thing really for the Russell. I don't know that the other indexes have something quite like this. Uh, that's correct. So when we look at the various indices that track the U.S. economy, I think from my perspective, not only at the CME, but as an equity index trader before that for 13, 14 years, is the Russell Recon is unique because it's a once a year reconstitution. When you look at some of the other methodologies out there, they may be quarterly, there may be monthly. So the once a year aspect certainly makes it unique. And then I think when you couple that with something like this U.S. small cap benchmark that the Russell 2000 represents, it becomes one of the most heavily traded volume days of the U.S. cash equity market. It's a great event in terms of the, the amount of risk that goes through the market as all of the indexers rebalance against this event. And it also represents a big opportunity for constituents of the Russell 2000. Think about those small to small cap names. It's a big event for them to be included in the index. There's a lot of enthusiasm if they make that high water mark of being represented in the Russell 2000. So there's a lot of fanfare. There's a lot of opportunity for the marketplace. And as a trader, it's always been one of the more exciting events, whether you're trading futures, uh, whether they're trading options or whether they're trading the individual cash components. It's just a very unique thing around that last week of June when the Russell Recon goes into effect. Always been a, a, a favorite of mine to watch both as a trader and being at the exchange. Yeah, right, Pax. It's one of those things where we always talk about you and I know what's on your calendar, understand inside the uh, these products before you go and trade them. And just hearing a little bit from Catherine, which we're going to get more when we dig deep inside what really decides what changes within the Russell. This is a big week for traders to really keep an eye on, uh, on something like this to be happening. No doubt. We just finished rollover, which is to, to me, as we, as we end rollover in the, in, in the equity quadrant, 
that's one of the most exciting times to start trading again is, is after expiration. And now we're coming into the, the, to the recon, into Russell, and that just increases my enthusiasm for trading the Russell again this week. I mean, it's, it's just, it's a lot of fun. It, it creates intraday volatility with a lot of volume, which, you know, for us, for, for locals, I need volume in order to be able to, I need volume and volatility to be able to trade a market. And we've got plenty of that this week. So Catherine, I want to go back to you. Take us inside and tell us what decisions you guys are making to make this Russell recon happen. And, and talk to us a little bit about what changes are coming this year. Sure. I'll just touch upon the the how widely the Russell indexes are followed. It is a critical event for the industry. Um, there's approximately $12 trillion benchmark to a Russell oh. index. So you can see the wide following it has, especially from the institutional space. Now, in terms of passive assets, there's $2 trillion tracking out of that $12 trillion. And last year, Russell Recon Day was, uh, you know, hit a record in, tra in terms of trade trading at the close. Um, across NYSE and NASDAQ exchanges, there were $180 billion trading up for this year. Uh, I've seen estimates, that, predictions that, you know, they believe um, the volume will come down, normalize back down to like the five-year average. The five-year average across the past five reconstitutions um, was $119 billion traded at the close. Um, so in terms of what we are doing, uh, we obviously want the market to anticipate this event. So the, the schedule is communicated early in the year. In the first quarter, the schedule for Russell Reconstitution, the upcoming Russell Reconstitution is published um, to footsierussell.com. So it, market participants are anticipating this event. They also know that rank day is May 6th. So, you know, the it, information that the companies are re-ranked on is based on May 6th data. Um, and then we did the first announcement on June 3rd. Um, the first announcement of preliminary additions and deletions to the Russell 3000 Russell microcap indexes were posted to footsierussell.com. And then, you know, following query week, query week um, where, you know, there, there are some internal quality controls and we're taking feedback from the market. Um, then lockdown begins um, and we posted updates to the following Friday. So again, June 24th, this coming Friday is uh, when all those changes take effect. I want to talk a little bit more about the changes. So I want to stay with you just for a second here, Catherine. Are you pulling out some stocks, adding some stocks, reweighting things? Is it a combination of all of that? Certainly. Um, the, so we re rank the entire U.S. Uh, equity market in terms of the eligible stocks. The eligible stocks for the Russell indexes are re ranked by size, total shares times price, and uh, with. Uh, that re-ranking process, we identified the breakpoint between the Russell 1000 and 2000 indexes. So this year, the breakpoint declined from last year's high of $5.2 billion to $4.6 billion. Um, this reflects the market volatility that began late last year and also demonstrates why we reconstitute the Russell indexes annually. Um, in terms of additions and deletions, you know, some names you might recognize include, uh, again, again, all of these names are posted on those ads and deletes on our website. Some names you might recognize include WeWork, Airbnb, Coinbase, and Robinhood. Um, now, in terms of industry shifts, they're relatively minor. However, because of the uh, energy industry standout performance, I mean, as of the rank day on May 6th, Russell 3000 Energy, um, you know, its total return was over 60%. Because of that, some of the stocks uh, that are graduating um, from the Russell 2000 into the Russell 1000 are energy stocks, um, also some consumer discretionary stocks. So because of that, the weight of energy will be declining a little bit um, for uh, the, the Russell 2000 index to offset the um, removal of those stocks from Russell, the Russell 2000 into the Russell 1000. Interesting that energy is going to be declining uh -huh. in it because that's the number one performer this year when it comes to when you just look at the, the overall market. Right. So, you know, in terms of the, the decline of energy, that's offset by the increases across industrials, healthcare, financials, and technology. And we do see that Russell 2000, because of the number of stocks and the diversification across the industry, it does tend to be a more diversified index than the Russell 1000. 
I want to change topics a little bit here and I want to talk really on the trading side and go to the CME side a little bit here. Uh, we'll, we'll go with you, Pex. Just first off, Pex, just I wrote a bunch of notes about what's changing within the Russell. And the first thing I think about as a trader is unlike the NASDAQ, unlike the S&P 500, unlike the Dow, for those markets, you and I are used to looking at single individual stocks really to drive the price action in those markets, right? A majority of the time we're looking at a handful or maybe a dozen stocks. When it comes to the Russell, that's not the case. It is more of a sector based uh, index. Hearing some of the things you heard from Catherine, what are your thoughts on this Russell recon coming up? <laughs> it, the, the technicals this week are going to be very different than the technicals going into, into recon with energy declining. You know, the energy stocks, as you said, have been some of the more, more volatile and the leaders of, of this. It's going to be it's going to be a really, really interesting uh, trade come come the week after. I, I, I really do think that the technicals are going to be very different. And, you know, the, not to mention the fact that the Russell is also uh, domestically based stocks, the broadest index as we slide, you know, further into this bear market and what that might entail. It's going to be interesting to see how they how they're rebalancing, especially with the industrials and and some of the. What did you say about consumer discretionary sector? Kat? There will be some stocks moving out of the Russell 2000 into the Russell 1000. So okay. because of that, there will be a little bit of a decline in consumer discretionary as well. So as of you know May, um, obviously things are changing every day. But in terms of the percentage point decrease for energy, it was almost one and a half percent for the Russell 2000. The decline was almost uh, 50 basis points for consumer discretionary. Um, so again, the, those decreases in weights are going to be reallocated to the other companies. Uh, and then I should also mention 19 IPOs will be um, coming into the Russell 2000 index um, and none to the Russell 1000. Tim, I want to go to you. And we're talking about RTY and M2K uh, and how we could see an impact on that. Does the exchange do anything differently? when it comes to these products or is it just, you know, same old, same old with CME? Yeah, it's a great question. I think the one thing to, you know, just to further drill down, down on that Catherine mentioned was this concept of graduating from the Russell two to the Russell one. And I think that's, what's also interesting about the recon is it's not, it's not just isolated to the Russell 2000. You actually have a movement across the entire Russell 3000 spectrum, which includes the large cap one cap thousand, the small cap 2000, and we have both futures series at CME. I think that's why it's interesting is graduating into the Russell 1000, for example, you'd still have to trade that because you may have a different allocation to the large cap US economy than you do to the small cap. So even if something's graduating, that's still a tradable event for the indexing community because you have to have that replication. You have to make sure the index and your stock hedges line up perfectly with the way you've allocated between the large cap and small cap. So you even have the trading activity around kind of the graduation events, let alone the ads, the deletes. There's multiple dimensions to this. And that's what's so great of having all these futures at CME because we have Russell 1000 E-minis, we have the Russell 2000 E-minis, the micro Russell 2000, the M2Ks. So for us, it's kind of business as usual with respect to operating the futures market, but it's certainly not business as usual for customers who are trying to maintain that exposure. And what I mean by that is think about what if you have inflows or outflows heading into recon? You have to make decisions about trading the old basket, the new basket. How do I optimize the ad delete? Am I waiting just for the close on Friday the 24th? Am I legging into it over a few days if I have an active management or I have an element of discretionary mandate inside my portfolio? The beauty of futures, though, are it's always based on the index. So as you're managing ways to optimize your stock portfolios or kind of what I refer to as your brute force stock replication hedges, the great thing about futures is it's just the index. So Catherine and the great team at FTSE Russell, when, they, when they're announcing this in advance, people can make their plans. They could outline their trading strategy for the week heading into recon. Or you can also still be a little bit passive, so to speak, by allocating to the futures to manage those inflows and outflows because the index level stays the same. It's a continuous index level around this. So the math behind it will account for the weighting changes, the constituent changes, with some divisor changes to keep that index at a constant level. And futures are always on that index. So it's a very easy way to maintain exposure if you don't necessarily want to deal with the ads, the deletes, the old, the new, the two to one, the one to two, kind of the graduation, and then all that kind of um, 
shuffling that happens around uh, the upper end of the 2000 and the lower end of the 1000. And conversely, if you are playing ad deletes or you are kind of managing that more actively, futures are a great hedge to that ad delete portfolio if you want to keep things dollar neutral. So business as usual for us, but all sorts of great tools for, uh, for the marketplace to use as they handle this, this you know, once in a, a year event for the Russell Recon. You know, Pax mentioned rollover. I think as traders, a lot of us, we look at this in a similar way. I mean, it, it is different because you're, you're just going from one month to the next when you're looking at a rollover. But when you look at this, one day you may own, uh, you may be long the Russell or short the Russell, and the next day that contract is actually changed. So for some of the bigger players, this changes a lot, right? It changes the dynamic of why you even have that position or how much you have of a position. I don't know who wants to chime in and talk about that because I think that's that's a big thing. Yeah, I think I think one thing to mention, right? You know, it's been and Anthony, we've talked about it on some other shows. Is one of the themes is index choice matters, right? That's certainly something we've yes. we've seen with the start of the work from home environment, and certainly continuing here uh, as we head into the summer. And and to the point around rollover, what's interesting is the Russell is continuing to gain momentum uh, with respect to volume at the exchange. We just recently had a single day trading record in the E mini Russell two thousand futures almost 880,000 contracts trading uh, during the roll period uh, just last week. And that's going to continue, but you really do have to kind of be precise as heading into recon. Of what, are you, what are you trading? Are you trying to be opportunistic or are you trying to maintain your index exposure? And that's why it's great to use things like BTIC, the basis traded index close mechanism at CME, because if you really just need to get that cash index close every day in futures form and don't want to necessarily put on new risk or have to worry about which basket you're trading, BTIC is a great way to do that uh, from this period of rollover through the recon uh, to maintain those exposures. And I think it was a great point, right? Especially as we head into the summer here, people are always thinking, all right, now that expiration is done, it's the unofficial start of summer for equities. And I was like, not until recon is over. You know, we still got a few more weeks here before the unofficial start of summer for equity markets. That's going to be a great few weeks here heading into ex uh, sorry, heading into recon and then coming out after it as people get used to making their new allocation decisions on the new index uh, sector weights, new index compositions. So I don't think their necessary macro level will change too much, but that tactical impl uh, implication of your trading strategy or your investing strategy or balancing month end flows, right? As, as this market continues to sell off here, all going to be very interesting dynamics as people need to be more precise around what they're trading in the Russell 3000 global portfolio. Yeah. I mean, we're coming out of rollover. You got month end on another very busy month and it's right. quarter end. Opportunities can be hard to find like catching lightning in a bottle. In uncertain times, it's tempting to retreat or simply wait and see. At CME Group, we empower those who act. We deliver tools to help manage risk and capture opportunities in every market climate across every major asset class to seize each possibility at precisely the right moment. CME Group, opportunity is everywhere. I wanna go to Catherine and discuss the timing of this. Tim just talked about it, and it's something I didn't even really initially think about in terms of timing of all of this as well. I mentioned rollover, end of month, end of quarter. Why does it take place at this time of year every year? Well, so Russell Index is when they were first launched, uh, rebalanced on a quarterly basis, then in uh, I believe it was 87 and went to semi-annual then annual um, reconstitution it's been annual reconstitution since 1989 in june uh, now initially um, my understanding is that it was june 30th but then due to the low liquidity being so close to the fourth of july holiday um, it eventually landed on where it is currently where it's um, the last friday in june unless it's the 29th or 30th then it's moved to the previous friday um, there's some a couple different theories about why it's June. Um, you know, they, it allows for the filings to come in by that rank date. Um, and also, uh, I, I believe uh, the, the RVX um, uh, has shown this, that, that June tends to be a low um, volatility month. Um, so there's a couple different theories, but it has been an annual reconstitution in June, um, basically since 1989. Um, and then can I add a couple comments actually building on Tim's earlier point about the graduations? Is that okay? 
Of course. Okay. Um, so, you know, we, we talked about the graduation from Russell 2000 to the 1000, but it isn't only one way. There are 40 companies moving down from the Russell 1000 to the Russell 2000. And then overall, 308 companies are joining the Russell 2000 index, but then also 315 are departing um, so with, with the majority going to the Russell microcap. So, you know, this interplay between the different size segments is really what keeps uh, the Russell in, in, in index's um, integrity, uh, the capture of the size segments intact. And it, it is really important to continue to reconstitute the indexes annually so that we are continuing to represent the indexes um, accurately. Yeah, thank you for that. And Pax, I wanna go to you now. We're taking all this in, you and I, is we're just traders over here. I'm listening to this and going, this is very interesting to me. And it's extremely important. And I look at it from a trader's point of view. Does this trade change your strategy at all? I know that you and I are, we're, you know, we're, we're very intraday and stuff like that, but do you come into it this week? Are you trading the same way? Are you waiting to see how things settle? What are your thoughts on that? Um, yes and no, I, uh, I, it, I'm not going to change my, my strategy. I'm going to deploy it more. I'm going to be more active in the Russell. Um, than uh, going into this week than what I would have been maybe a month, month and a half ago. Uh, actually, that's not true because that's when we started to really break out of that range. But I am going to be paying more attention to the intraday volatility and seeing if I can't build a position going into range expansion as we get to the end of the week, end of the quarter, end of the month, especially after my favorite time of the trading cycle is right after expiration. So we're going into all of these different things with with some increased volatility and increased volume, I'm going to be more active in the Russell than, I, than what I normally am. Now, that doesn't mean to say that I don't trade the Russell on a regular basis, because I do. It's just I'm going to be looking to possibly build some positions on range expansion here. Because it could be a turning point, because something right. is changing yeah. inside of it. That And you, I think what's interesting about this week is that the market's at a critical spot. Right. So it's there's a lot going on here. And I think that hearing from what you're saying and for me i do a lot of swing trading you're right i mean if we start to turn around here that that could be an indication of you know that something could be be changing here catherine when you guys look at doing this i guess when you comes to the weightings, let's talk about the weightings because i have already mentioned that this is not something as individual traders look at for individual stocks we look at the weightings of the um of the sectors so could you just actually just give us a rundown of what the current weightings are we don't need all of them all but just just the where the the leaders are if you have that information uh in front of you and also how FTSE decides to change those weightings or is it just something that's done through this stock is just performed or changed and it just kind of organically happens or is it something that is manually happening. You're absolutely correct, sir. I'm looking up the positions for the Russell 2000 weightings. Um, the biggest, uh, it, it is, again, it's fairly diversified. I mean, the biggest currently, um, you know, it, weight in the Russell 2000 is financials um, and industrials. They're both at 16%. Um, followed by healthcare, 15%. You know, healthcare has seen a lot of additions over the past couple of years with the pandemic and biotech stocks coming in. Um, and, and to your point about whether the sector weighting is something that we are manipulating, no, we are not. They're purely uh, the result of the roll-up of the stocks. Um, the, the weighting is determined by the float adjusted weight of those stocks as they roll up into the Russell 2000. So it does reflect um, the market, the Russell 2000, this, this small cap segment as it currently stands in the eligible stocks and the float adjusted weighting. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad I asked that because Tim, maybe you know this answer. Uh, I know I don't for sure, but I, I think with the other indexes, they are adjusting the stocks, the individual stocks weightings. Am I wrong on that? Or is that, is that something also that is organically done? Yeah, I think, you know, I think broadly speaking, and then Catherine might be able to speak to, I think what some view is the advantage of some of the Russell methodology is, 
Uh, every index provider has certain different methodologies. And especially when you get into the sector breakdown, if they're doing a cap methodology or if they're doing kind of a pure play such that the sectors are completely stackable to the parent index, uh, all have a slightly different method. But I think what I've always appreciated about the Russell 1 and the Russell 2 approach is it's largely market driven. Uh, and, and that might be rightly wrong in my mind, but as a trader and at the exchange, I always thought of it as the mar it's dictated by the market. There's not a, a ton of advisory committee work that's done, particularly around the Russell 1000. Uh, so I think there's a, a little bit of stylistic difference in how that's done. Uh, but Catherine, maybe you could put a finer point on that uh, to how Russell is unique versus some of the other uh, index and global, uh, uh, sorry, the U.S. and global index providers. Yep, you hit the nail on the head. Our, we do have advisory committees as part of our governance process. However, they they are really advising us on the rules, um, and we do take feedback from the market uh, in terms of you know if if something needs to be addressed. Like several years ago, the voting rights um, you know rule was added. Um, so so the advisory committee is there not to vote on stock membership uh, index membership. Um, but to advise on the rules and to provide the market practitioner feedback. Um, but yeah, the Russell indexes are, are constructed from the ground up. Now there is banding to try to mitigate that turnover between the Russell 1000 and 2000, for example. Um, and, and that banding was introduced back in 2007. So over time, we've added some methodology improvements to mitigate turnover. And um, that's generally the primary concern to you know, make sure that uh, indexes are investable and that we're limiting turnover. And, and then to your point about the stackable methodologies, yes, we do have a series of capped indexes. You can apply the capping methodology if you need a RIC capping or 40 act capping. We have additional methodologies that can be applied to the base Russell 1000 or 2000 indexes, but we are, our objective with the Russell indexes, the standard Russell 1000, Russell 2000 indexes is to reflect the market and what it's doing. Yeah, because like I said, I didn't know when I think of like how Tesla moves into the S&P uh, or they're moving stocks in and out of the NASDAQ. I don't know the process for that. That's, that's, not my, <laughs> that's not what I do, but what I just find it really interesting and Russell, I think what does separate it is exactly all of the things that you mentioned. I think that's extremely important because it's organically happening within the index. Uh, and, and as a trader, Pax, I don't know about you, I just think that it, it does make for a different type of index. You know, it's not like I, I've talked about this already. You're not just sitting there watching Apple if you're trading the NASDAQ. You know, I mean, not that you're just doing that, but we're so used to it. I mean, I, I know when I'm trading NASDAQ futures, I'm always looking at Apple, I'm looking at Tesla. Uh, I'm looking at a few other ones because I know that they're going to be a majority of the moving. And a lot of times I'm, I'm missing what's happening within a lot of, of the NASDAQ because I'm so, so hyper-focused on that. And they could push or pull or turn me around. But with this, it's I think Tim said it best. It's really just more of a trader's type index. Oh, most definitely. The free market is going to dictate which goes higher or which goes lower. Yeah, it, it doesn't get any better in my mind than that. But, um, the, the increased the increased volatility in this time, which is just so interesting to me with the different weighted sectors. So during the trading day, if I want to take a look at where we are as an economy in the U.S., I, I'm going to take a look at the at the Russell. It's the broadest index. It's domestic. It's going to give us a real solid idea as to the health of the overall economy. So like you said earlier, Anthony, we are at really important levels in the equity markets right now. It's going to be important to see going into recon what um, uh, uh, what happened. Yeah, final thing before I let everybody go today, you know, Tim, I wanted to pick your brain a little bit about this because you, you mentioned a bunch of other products. Honestly, it's products I, I don't even trade and I, I think that it's important to go over all of the product the, the all of the products that this is going to impact, you know, not just the ones that I'm trading, you know, I'm just kind of staying in my world of the RTY and M2K, but you mentioned BTIC, uh, you know, Russell options and even I think dividend futures is something that I know uh, could be impacting this. Give everybody an overall summary of of what this Russell recon is impacting the futures markets and options markets at CME. Absolutely. So I think a lot of folks and a lot of your listeners and viewers are very familiar with the, the micro E-mini Russell 2000, the M2K and its older sibling, the E-mini, the RTY future. We have lots of other transactional handshakes, so to speak, that we offer here at CME Group. And we're constantly trying to focus in on the customer's how to trade decision. And make sure that if you have a certain style of trading, whether you're an individual trader or an institutional trader, that you have very different tools in your toolbox to capture and pinpoint some of those trading strategies. So what I mentioned before with respect to BTIC, that's the basis traded index close that allows you to trade the relationship 
between the cash index and the future at CME. Another way to think about that is if you really are benchmarked to the close or want to capture the certainty of the close of the underlying cash index, you can do so with certainty, but all the benefits that the future provides and take or make delivery of that future on a daily basis based on a level that is equivalent to the cash index close in futures form. That's great for individuals, maybe trading cash baskets, MOC at NYSE or NASDAQ, and you want to do a little bit of Delta hedging, you could trade the BTIC E-mini. Or if you're an institution, kind of cash equitization or managing inflows or outflows, or trying to put that, that dividend yield to work on a daily basis, BTIC is a great way for that. because You could always capture that certainty of your underlying benchmark, whether it's Russell 1 or Russell 2. Options on futures, it seems, is another great thing where it's really starting to take hold on Russell 2000 E-mini options on futures, and that's almost up to about seven or 8,000 contracts per day, up almost, I believe, 40 or 50% versus last year. And the benefit there is we have weeklies, we have monthlies, we have quarterlies, uh, but you take or make delivery of the underlying future. So while we love the Russell 2000, let's be honest, trading a 2000 named stock basket can be a lot of work to manage that and get that into the close. And sometimes the tail of that may not even be in whole shares, right? If you think about that, depending on the Delta hedger you're trying to do, options on futures are great because you get the E-mini future. You don't have to worry about replacing that Delta hedge and you can fine tune it with respect to being all that option hour that you want, but just dealing with the ease of future versus the cash basket. And what we've recently introduced here in 2022 are dividend futures on the Russell 2000. It's something that's been growing in popularity in the US. And when I really think about the Russell recon and dividend futures, is think about your long-term Russell exposure, whether you're trading options or forwards or structured products, you may have dividend exposure, but as a function of recon, that dividend yield may change. So dividend futures go further out the curve uh, than just the front month quarterly future. So it's a good way to manage some of that risk, especially as you're going over recon or thinking about multiple year exposure around Russell 2000 dividends. Really excited about that. And that's off to a great start just a few weeks into trading here in 2022. I'm glad you, I had you talk about that because PAX, right? I mean, I didn't even know about some of these products. You know, we, we it's a lot of times as traders, we get so caught up in our own world. And, and you and I have talked about this a lot. You got to find the right product for your strategy as well, right? I mean, some of these other products, that they might be better for your style of trading or your type of trading or different ways to hedge uh, your portfolios. I just think it's important for traders to know, and that's why I do these shows, to know, go beyond the charts. You know, Tim and I, you and I have done so many of these over the years. Catherine, you and I have done some as well. Uh, just understanding these products, it's so important. And I'm so thankful uh, for you guys joining me here today. We're gonna go around the horn again, kind of like how we started, but uh, we're going to go and just say, look it, it's Russell Recon Week. Uh, leave us with just, you know, a, a quick little thought on what you think that traders should be watching or anything that we need to keep an eye on. Eye on, and also Catherine, uh, Pax, and Tim, just tell everybody where they could where, where they could find and learn more about you. Catherine, we'll start with you. Sure, you can find more information. Um, there are lots of reports and blogs that we publish on FTSERussell.com. And in terms of social, feel free to follow us at um, FTSE Russell on LinkedIn and at FTSE Russell on Twitter. We'll go to you, Tim. Any final thoughts? I think just final thoughts is, is you know, pay attention to Recon. If you're not familiar, it's also a great learning opportunity to see how it might impact some of your strategies, whether they're explicitly Russell Index related or even single stock. It's an event that's going to have an impact on the market. So it's always important to know how it might import, uh, impact things going into the close on the 24th of this year. And for futures and anything else CME Group related, always do your homework. Lots of educational resources on futures, options on futures, and all the futures and transactional handshakes we offer at cmegroup.com. So it's the best place to go for better information and education around CME Group. One, one last thing before we get to you, Pax, because I just want to make sure that uh, everyone understands this. This goes into effect on the close. So as the bell rings, it changes on that. It's not changing on the 24th. It changes on the closing bell of the 24th, just to confirm that, right? Yeah, correct. And I also mentioned that we use uh, the NASDAQ closing cross and NYSE auction prices uh, and so that uh, traders are getting a single price at the close. Boy, that, that post is going to be pretty interesting, huh, Pax? <laughs> Final oh, I, thoughts I to you. I can't wait. I can't wait for that close. I really can't. As a trader, I can't wait for that close. I wanted to echo something that Tim was saying about CME Group being a leader in, in education. If it wasn't for the education for the CME Group that they offered us as we were transitioning from the floor off the floor, I'd be 
driving a truck someplace or selling selling something. So thank you, Tim, for that. And my family extends its thanks. I'll be looking for increased volatility going into the close next week, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing how, how the recon is going to affect the market moving forward, uh, especially in light of the, the recent volatility we've had in the market. And you can find me at um, on Twitter at PaxTrader777. Um, you can find me at, on my website at www.thepaxgroup.org. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me. It's Russell Recon Week, everybody. Trade well, manage your risk, and be ready for a wild close on Friday. That's it for today. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for listening to Futures Radio Show. If you enjoyed the show, please leave a five-star review on iTunes. Never miss an episode. Go to anthonycrudelli.com and get on our email list for show notifications and for free content that is exclusively for subscribers. Also on anthonycrudelli.com, you will find tons of videos and education on trading futures, options, and crypto. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Opinions expressed are solely my own and my guests, and they do not express the views or opinions of my sponsors. Futures Radio Show is produced by Crudelli Productions.